is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning, dear friends and brothers and sisters. I am glad to visit you through this video and a short meditation. We have been considering meditating on the events of uh, the last week of the life of Jesus here on earth, which we call the Passion Week. We have seen what happened on Sunday. We have seen what happened on Monday. We also have seen what happened on Tuesday. But on Wednesday, it seems nothing uh, happened. It was a silent day. The next event happened on Thursday, tomorrow, which we will see. And so since there was nothing happening on Wednesday, I thought of speaking uh, something which, uh, uh, which, which is quite different from uh, what we have been considering. There are so many people uh, surrounded the suffering and the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. So many people were involved. King Herod, and before that, the religious leaders, and uh, his critics, and who wanted to see his uh, death. And then we have Herod, the king. And then we have the soldiers who crucified, who did the act of crucifying him. And then we have the big crowd. Among the crowd, a small minority was his followers. Majority of the people, though they have benefited much through his miracles and ministry, on that day, they all turned against him and said, crucify him, crucify him. And uh, then the disciples were there, and several women were there. They were closer to Jesus than even the disciples in following that procession that day. And they were even at the cross. And uh, one character, thus there are many, many characters there. And one character that I want to consider with you today is Judas Iscariot. He was betrayed Jesus Christ. Now, what I want to talk to you is, what does Judas Iscariot teach us? Does he teach us anything at all? No, he was a thief from the beginning. Jesus knew it. And Jesus himself said it would have been better if he had not been born. That was the life that Judas Iscariot lived. Nevertheless, Jesus chose him as a disciple. He was there along with other disciples. He was also sent out to preach the gospel and uh, cast out demons and heal the sick. So he had that, but he participated in that ministry too. And yet, at the end, he betrayed Jesus, sold him for 30 pieces of silver coins, and at the end, he went out in the night and hung himself. That's what happened to Judas Iscariot. So what does he teach us? I would like to pass on to you four very important lessons that Judas Iscariot, Iscariot teaches us. What are these lessons? <clears throat> Number one, it is possible for one to be in the church and yet not of the church. Jesus told his disciples, you are in the world, but not of the world. There are many today in the church, but not of the church. One can be even at the table of the Lord, and yet at the end, go and hang himself after denying Jesus completely. Take care. You can even participate in the ministry and yet be a betrayer of Jesus at the end. Now Jesus is very much concerned about our heart's condition. Do not be deceived. 
you must vigorously follow Jesus in love, not for any selfish purpose. Judas Iscariot followed Jesus, and yet his intention was selfless because he thought Jesus was going to uh, defeat the Roman uh, foreign power and liberate uh, the people of Israel and establish his own earthly kingdom, and he will have a part in that. That was his intention. And when Judas discovered that he was not going to do that, then he went and betrayed. So don't be deceived, my friend. We can be in the church. That doesn't mean that we have eternal life and we are in favor with God. And God is in favor of us. So one can be in the church and in the yet not of the church. That is the first lesson. The second lesson Judas Iscariot to teach us is a very important lesson, which is you are responsible for the decisions you make. See, Judas Iscariot made a decision. And uh, he was responsible for that decision. You are very free to make your own decision. And you are, you are, you are, you are free. Nobody is going to stop you from making your own decision. But you are not free to choose the consequences of your decision. Keep it in mind. Nobody will stop you for making any decision you so desire. You can decide against Jesus. Even after listening to the gospel of Jesus Christ, you choose not to acknowledge him as your Lord and Savior. That is your decision. And, uh, but whatever decision you make in your life, not only about your, for your faith, but for any other decision. There are so many decisions we have to make. Every day we make some decisions or the other. And I encourage you to be very, very wise and you make your decisions with prayer and seeking God so that you will not make wrong decisions and the consequences of that decision will be too much for you to bear. So you are responsible for the decisions you make. Even God will not stop you from making that decision. So be wise. And the third uh, uh, lesson that we learn about uh, Judah, uh, from Judas is God will never force his will onto you. Whatever decision you make, you remember the rich young ruler who came to Jesus asking, uh, teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus told him the right answer. He looked at him and he loved him. He said, what does the commandment say? And uh, Jesus told, them, told him the commandment. And uh, this man said, Master, I observe all these commandments from my childhood. I want to know is there anything else that you, uh, I must do to inherit eternal life. And then Jesus looked at him and he loved him and he said, there is still one thing you lack. Go back home, sell all what you have and give the income to the poor. Then you come back and follow me daily, you will have eternal life. See, even this man did not know his own problem. His problem was he loved his riches he more than loved God. And he did not know that. For the first time in his life he discovered that he truly loved his riches. Because the Bible says he left that place sad with a sad face because he was very rich. My friends, we can observe all these commandments externally and yet to be far away in our heart from the Lord. 
and God himself complained about his own people Israel. They serve me with their lips, but from their heart they are far away from me. It is very important, therefore, for us to understand this, that God will not force his will on you. And Jesus watched this man walking away from that place, from his presence, with a sad face. Jesus did not stop him. He didn't go after him and picked him up by his ear and uh, shook him and he said, no, you better obey. No, he didn't. He told the truth. But the mistake this young man made was he had the right question and he came to the right person for the answer. And he received the right answer and he rejected that only answer that would have given him eternal. And Jesus did not force it on him. And that is the way Jesus Christ is his gentle. He tells us the truth, nothing but the truth. And those who obey shall be blessed, reap the harvest. And last of all, then you may ask, why did Jesus keep him with him as a disciple? You know, it simply means this, the lesson is this. Jesus extends his love to all. No one is excluded. Though Jesus knew that he was a thief and he would do what he has done ultimately. And yet he kept him. There was an opportunity for him to repent and return. But he didn't. It is true even today, my friends. He extends your, his love towards you, even now. While he does not force you, he waits in love to get your response. And I pray that you will make the right choice according to God's will, and you will respond to the love of God which is manifested in, the, in Jesus Christ our Lord. He went to the cross for you and he died on the cross as a sacrifice for your sin just to save you. He carried upon his body the condemnation and the judgment of a sin and sicknesses and diseases. To set you free from the power of Satan and sin and give you eternal life. How can you reject such love? Respond to this love with your whole heart and soul and strength and spirit and mind. Bow before him in humility and repent and acknowledge him as your Lord and Savior now. That will help you to experience God's wonderful love and eternal life. Apostle Paul, he made a choice. When Jesus appeared to him, he made a choice that he would never again go back to the world and live the kind of life he lived till that moment. He gave up everything in order to follow Jesus the rest of his life and serve him. That was his choice. Jesus appeared and told him and revealed himself to him. He saw his glory and he was convinced. Yes, Jesus Christ to whom I was persecuting is truly the Son of God, my Lord and my Savior. God bless you as you make your choices. Learn this lesson from Judas Iscariot that you may live eternally with Jesus and not perish. God loves you. And this is God's will for you. God bless you as you live today for his glory. And I pray that God will enrich you in your relationship with him.
that that relationship will go deeper. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will fill you and the Spirit of God will open your inner eyes to see the glory and to see the love of God in the death of Jesus Christ on the cross and his power in his resurrection and all for your sake. And I thank you, Jesus, for helping us. In your name, amen. God bless you. Have a good day today. God is with you. Amen.